Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video where we're going to be discussing some spring DLCs for both Planet Zoo and Jurassic World Evolution 2. There's been a lot of speculation in the last few months regarding what DLCs could be possibly coming out. Our last DLCs for Planet Zoo and Jurassic World Evolution 2 were the December release of the Eurasia Animal Pack and the November release of the Cretaceous Predator Pack, each consisting of a diverse range of animals. So, let's begin. For Planet Zoo, we have the Latin America pack, consisting of five animals and a bit of scenery, but this might not be the case as we'll get to a bit later. Our first animal is the black and gold howler monkey, a great species that would be a fantastic addition for a primate in Planet Zoo, with diverse sexual dimorphism between the jet black males and the golden females. South American Kawati is another diverse pick from South America, a relative of the raccoon that would make a great addition and is the most requested animal in the game currently. Ocelots are an elusive small cat from the rainforests of South and Central America and even into a little bit of, of North America. They would be a great species and would be very intricately designed. They would look absolutely fantastic in the game and I would really love Frontier to bring this animal to life. Another animal I would love to see Frontier bring to the game would be the Spectacle Bear as our fourth habitat animal. They are just a very, they're a very interesting bear species, the last remaining short-faced bear and the only one in South America. They get their name from the golden pattern that will encircle their eyes in most individuals, but can often have quite a lot of variation. For the walkthrough exhibits, there is not, none better pick than macaws, a diverse range of parrots and in this case, I would pick five different species to sort of resemble what we have with the butterflies. So my personal species would be the blue and yellow macaw, the green winged macaw, the scarlet, hyacinth, and military macaws. In terms of scenery, some Mayan and Aztec architecture would be great additions. However, this pack may not be a scenery pack, as all this scenery is very similar to the South America pack that we got back in April of 2020. And they do look very closely related in that sense. So maybe Frontier won't do a scenery pack in this case, instead opting for an animal pack, which personally I wouldn't be too fussed with. In terms of those next animals, the Southern Tamandua and Arboreal Antis would be another great addition. Followed by the Greater Rhea, the largest bird on the continent. And the mysterious Patagonian Mara, a very odd looking animal, but would be a great addition. And if we weren't to get a walkthrough exhibit animal like Macaws, a regular exhibit animal like a green anaconda or a plumed basilisk, or even an eyelash viper, would all make fantastic additions to the roster. In terms of update features, I think some staff vehicles would be a great quality of life change allowing staff to get around much larger zoos much quicker and be able to carry out a lot more jobs much easier. And in terms of the guests, some guest transport would be another great addition, having buses and carts and maybe even electric bikes to get around the zoo much quicker and in a different way. Potentially even changing the animal transport system by adding a transport vehicle of some kind, which will carry the animal crates to the necessary exhibit where it will be introduced to. Another feature could be adding the climbing to the pangolin, and this could work in the favour of the tamandua, as both these animals behave in a very similar way and climb very similarly too. So having the pangolin able to climb, the tamandua could piggyback on that behaviour. A possible remaster we could see could be the giant anteater, opting for a bit more detail and realism compared to sort of the stylized look that we got in the South America pack. But perhaps the most necessary animal to get a remaster would be the Jaguar. In terms of South American animals, the Jaguar is not the highest quality. And if we could get a very realistic looking Jaguar, I think I'd be using this animal in my zoos a lot more often. Now onto Jurassic World Evolution 2 with the Cretaceous Prey Pack. 
The first animal of this pack being the highly requested Microceratus, which appeared in Jurassic World Dominion in the Malta sequence, but was not added in the Malta DLC. A missing animal for a long time, this could be the perfect pack to introduce it. Another creature that would be a great addition for this pack would be the Titanic Argentinosaurus, a colossal titanosaurian dinosaur from southern South America. This would be a fantastic addition to really stretch the scales in terms of how big animals could get. Argentinosaurus has often been dubbed the largest animal that has ever lived on land, although that title has been up for debate as we have discovered several other large titanosaurs, but Argentinosaurus is iconic nonetheless. Another titanic herbivore is Shantungosaurus, a species from Eastern Asia during the late Cretaceous, one of the largest hadrosaurs ever, and a little bit bigger than Edmontosaurus. But this animal is known for perhaps being a very difficult prey item, and we'll get to what that could entail a bit later. The final dinosaur I would probably want to put in this pack is there's a lot to choose from as we could have a larger ceratopsian like that of an eo triceratops which would go for a more accurate triceratops like look or a diabloceratops and we could also get an ankylosaur like tarchia or an ornithomimin like ornithomimus which could also be feathered prenocephaly being another pachycephalosaur we could possibly get some other small herbivores could be protoceratops and psittacosaurus all of which have even chances of making it into the pack, and all of which are highly requested. And either way, I'd love to see any of these be the final animal for this pack. In terms of some update features, we could see some new variants added, much like the last update, which added an Allosaurus variant, a Brachiosaurus variant, Stegosaurus, Pteranodon, and Dimorphodon variants, all from respective different models compared to the base game renders. In terms of some other variants we could see would be the 1993 Triceratops, the Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptors, both male and female could get uh, some different variants, the Dominion Parasaurolophuses, the feathered Dominion T-Rex, and perhaps even adding a crestless Edmontosaurus to represent Edmontosaurus Anectins rather than the Regalus that we currently have. Another major feature we could see is Hadrosaurs being able to fight back against carnivores, this is where Shantangosaurus could be in. Being a much larger hadrosaur would be a much more difficult prey item for many predators to take on. And adding this feature for many other hadrosaurs would be a great addition. The same can be said for the titanic hadrosaur, uh, so, hadrosaurs, sauropods. The sauropods currently go down very easily without much of a fight. But perhaps, much like these dreadnoughtists from Prehistoric Planet, we could see them fight each other or potentially fight back against potential predators. But that is all for now. If you enjoyed this video and agree with some of these ideas, do leave them your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have any different ideas, leave those in the comments down below as well. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe if you're willing. And yeah, we'll have to see what the future has in store for these two games and what DLCs we could potentially get. As for now, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.